Hi there. My name is Ben Rollison and I'm going to just take you through a, uh, a little tutorial today um, to do with a question that I've seen asked on forums um, several times, uh, namely how to give a lens flare an alpha channel. Um, that in itself would be a uh, an absurdly quick tutorial probably, but um, it touches on a subject of uh, mats and pre-multiplication, which is a very interesting topic because I keep seeing these sorts of questions asked on forums too, um, generally by compositors who use Nuke or Fusion or Shake or something like that coming over to After Effects. Now pre-multiplication is a, a concept that is going to be much more familiar to, to users of Nuke and Shake and, and so on. Um, because in those programs you control your pre-multiplication and your pre-division and so on uh, manually. And for After Effects users it's a much more foreign concept because After Effects does it all for you. Which is very handy on one level, except for people coming over from the compositing packages and for sort of advanced After Effects compositors. It's very frustrating that you're not able to control that manually. Now. There's a plugin out there called Unmult, which lots of people use. But I, 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 I've come to doing this tutorial because I just happened to mention on a forum you don't actually need this plugin. You can do it in After Effects perfectly easily. So the first part of this, this tutorial is just showing you how to use After Effects to do an Unmult, how to use After Effects to, uh, to give a lens flare an alpha channel. And then I'm going to go into a little bit of background about what pre-multiplication means. It's a bit of simple maths basically how compositing applications create a composite. But when you understand that, you do find, although you know you can't take that knowledge and go out and make some funky effect, you may very well find that in the future when you've got sort of tricky compositing problems and, and strange things happening to your edges that you don't quite understand, that an understanding of how the, uh, how the program is actually making this composite can really help you in solving those kind of problems that come up. Uh, pretty often, and also, I mean, you know, if you do go over to a, to Nuke or to Fusion or Shake or whatever kind of compositing program in the future, you're going to be much better prepared for uh, uh, all of the sort of manual control you have in there. So, first things first, let's give a lens flare an alpha channel. Let's make a black solid and we'll call it lens flare. I'm going to choose a lens flare from the generate menu, standard. After Effects lens flare. Easy peasy. Now, I mean, the first question, I guess, is why would you want to give a lens flare an alpha channel? Because in After Effects, you generally switch the blending mode to add or screen, and uh, it composites very nicely over the background, even though fundamentally lens flare renders on the uh, composited over the layer that you uh, started out with, in this case, black. Well, there's various reasons. I mean, for one, you may be wanting to export this as a layer into an editing package that perhaps doesn't uh, doesn't support various blending layers. It only has a normal mode. Uh, that would be one reason. But there's various there's there's various reasons. Um, oh, I've got an email. It's my first for months. Uh, now then, let's get on. The technique basically involves taking the luminance from the uh, from the lens flare and putting that into the alpha channel. So we're sort of hijacking the the brightness, if you like, and making a making a transparency channel out of that. For that, you use the set mat under the channel menu. Um, take mat from layer lens flare, and use some mat luminance. And that's just telling After Effects that we take the luminance from the lens flare layer and we put it into the alpha channel. Huh, that's disappeared. Now the reason for that is that when you use Take Matte from Layer, After Effects isn't able to just go one step back and take the layer with the lens flare applied. It goes right back to the start and it uses the source of the layer. So before we just apply our Set Matte there, we're going to have to pre-compose this, making sure that all of the attributes move into a new composition. We'll call this Lens Flare Pre-Comp, like that. And now when we double click on this layer, you can see we come into a composition which has the lens flare layer with the effect applied as its single layer. And that's now become our layer one of uh, our main lens flare composite composition. Okay, now uh, let's just solo that layer. We'll see that it's, uh, when we look in alpha channel, that it's got a solid alpha. 
there is no transparency and underneath we've got our background. So first things first, let's apply that set matte and that takes the luminance, the brightness of the lens flare and it, wrong effect, <laughs> and it switches it into the alpha channel. So we take the luminance and we put it into the alpha channel. And there you go. Now you can see that's worked to an extent. We can now see through our lens flare, but there's some weirdness going on here. And these bits that should be nice and light and bright, they come out kind of dark and smudgy and it all looks a bit weird. Now, the reason for that is that we've taken what is essentially a pre-multiplied image of our lens flare, the lens flare composited against black, and we've multiplied it again. This is a double multiplied, uh, an image that's been multiplied by a, a matte twice over, and what you'd call a double pre-multiplied image. So what we need to do is we need to unpre-multiply, so it's just multiplied once by its matte. If this is baffling you a bit, don't worry, we'll, we'll, I'll explain this in a little bit more depth in a moment. Now, under set matte, there's this tasty looking checkbox that says pre-multiply matte layer. Um, well, I'm not quite sure what that does, but that certainly doesn't un-pre-multiply our, uh, our image there. I'm not quite sure how that's wired up. Um, so what we do, we do our un-pre-multiply manually, and this is exactly the same as what the... Um, Unmalt plugin does. Take a channel combiner effect from the channel menu, channel, channel combiner, and under from just go straight to pre-multiplied and then hit invert and that basically takes you from pre-multiplied back to straight. There you go. Um, and, and that's it. We now have a, a lens flare. We can see it's got a transparency channel like that. If we go and look in alpha you can see there's its alpha channel and while still in a normal mode, we can composite it over our background, and it looks pretty good. We can switch to add if we want, or to screen. Obviously, they're going to look a little bit different because the blending modes are fundamentally not the same, but we've got something that works pretty much in a normal blending mode. And then if you want to after that, you can uh, come up to the channel menu, or even the levels menu under color correction, levels like that, and you can alter the alpha gamma to affect that sort of mid brightness level if you like of the transparency there you can see we're going a bit crazy but you know pull it either way and we're just adjusting the the mid level of the alpha channel there Let's see it in action there you go you can see our alpha channel changing good so here we are in a new composition um, which is aimed at uh, aimed at um, basically showing you how After Effects handles a composition, or how it makes a composition, if you like. Now, there's three elements to a comp. There's a background, there's a foreground fill, and there's a foreground mat. And I've made those three layers here to show you. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to make a second version of the foreground mat. I'm going to duplicate the layer, and that's going to be a an inverse of the foreground mat. I'm going to make sure that all of those attributes move into the new composition like that. I'm going to double click to go into the new composition we've just created. Or Alt double click. Oh, another email. Ah. Uh, Alt double click in After Effects CS3. And then I'm just going to use channel invert to create an inverse of our mat like that. Now, we're using pure maths for this, we're not using any After Effects-y stuff, so I'm just going to come up to Channel, uh, Compound Arithmetic, and I'm going to multiply the background layer by the inverse mat, and I'm going to set the operator to multiply to do that. And what we now have is the background layer multiplied by the inverted mat. The inverted mat layer doesn't have to be on. And you can see how that works. If you imagine that every white pixel is a, has a value of 111 and every black pixel has a value of 000, where you multiply the value of the background pixel by the foreground one and it's 111, it's itself. 4 times 1 is 1, 123 times 1 is 123, and x times 1 is x. So those ones stay the same when you just multiply them. Here, where there's 0, same thing. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So 4 times 0 is 0, 123 times 0 is 0, x times 0 is 0, it doesn't matter. 
whatever there was in the background layer before, when you multiply it by black in the mat, it disappears. And that's what you get. You get a kind of background with this hole cut out of it by the mat. Now for the foreground, we do exactly the same thing. We take our foreground fill, and we're going to use the compound arithmetic to select the foreground mat as the second source, and we're going to multiply it by the foreground mat. And there you can see our foreground fill, that was a blue square, has been multiplied by the mat to give us a nice fuzzy blue circle. Now that, in a nutshell, is what pre-multiplication does. It takes the it takes the fill and it multiplies by the mat. And as you can see from before, where it multiplies by zero, you get nothing. Where it multiplies by one, you get itself, whatever the pixel value was beforehand. And then the magic of the composition, you take the background, the foreground, and you add the two together. It's that simple. So if I just come up to uh, my compare here, this is I've got exactly the same thing, except using sort of standard After Effects. We've got a pre-multiplied blue circle, and we've got an ordinary background, and I've just put one over the top of the other using the normal mode. And if we switch back and forth between the one that I've made by hand, if you like, just using adding and multiplying, and the After Effects one, you can see they are identical. So there you go, it's doing the same thing just deconstructed it a bit. Now I'm not suggesting that you uh, deconstruct every uh, composite that you do, that, that, would be, that would be stupid. But knowing how that works will help you hopefully um, in the future when you come across situations like this. Um, here I have an example of double pre-multiplication and here I have an example of proper pre-multiplication. Again it's our blue circle against a pale background this time. And here you can see you've got sort of desaturated edges turning to grey. That's wrong. And the reason is that here we have taken a foreground fill that looks like this. It looks like a blue square where all of the blue values, as you can see up here in the info panel, all of the blue values are exactly the same all over. And when we multiply that by the mat, by effectively choosing Luma Mat foreground mat, like that, we're multiplying the correct blue value by the matte value to composite it over the top. In this example here, the one with the nasty edges, you can see if I just turn the track map off, that is our foreground fill. And at these points here, this isn't a pure blue anymore. It's already been pre-multiplied. So we're getting sort of values, you can see, changing up here in the info panel that are sort of somewhere between blue and black, fading to black as we go out. Well, when we take that and we multiply that by the mat, these areas that we're multiplying by the mat here are already kind of greyish. They're not actually blue. You can see the value here going from nice saturated blue already. Before we've reached the edge, it's going to sort of dark blue-grey. And when we multiply that by the mat, you can suddenly understand why these pixels are not blue like the middle of the circle. We've double pre-multiplied, we've double multiplied by the mat. We already had a version that was pre-multiplied by the mat, and we've multiplied a second time, and that gives us the funny edges. In that situation, you just have to unpre-multiply. And once you understand that, then, then a lot of problems that you get with compositing suddenly become much clearer. And if you do ever sort of go over from After Effects to a dedicated uh, compositing program, you know, the shakes and nukes and what have you, um, you'll find the transition much easier if you understand something about pre-multiplication already. That's it. That's all there is to it, really. Um, I hope that was interesting, maybe even enlightening. Um, my name's Ben Rollison, and uh, thanks for listening. Bye.